Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're going to be creating on scroll animations using just CSS. No JavaScript, no external library, just pure CSS magic. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to add sleek animations to your website that trigger when the user scrolls down the page. So let's dive right in the video. So this is the finished project. So as you can see, if I reload the page, it says here, scroll to see the magic. And as we scroll down, we see elements appear from left and right. And this happens only when we scroll. Now this doesn't only trigger on scrolling top to bottom. It also reverses the animation as we go from bottom to top. So let's look at how to build this using just CSS. First, let us look at the HTML structure. It's fairly simple. So we're gonna start off by creating the broader template by clicking or typing the exclamation symbol and then hitting the enter. Once done, it would have something like this where I have added the additional title as scroll animation. Then we'd add the necessary CDNs. In this case, we need the remix icons. So you're gonna go to Google and you're gonna type remix icon CDNJS, and then the first link that opens up, you're gonna click out of that. And here, if you don't find the latest version, you're gonna just go to the previous version, copy the minified CSS, and you're gonna add that. Inside of the body tag, we add an H1 tag that acts as our main heading, encouraging the users to scroll to see the magic. Now just below that, we add a div with a class of container. Now this container will hold all our different card elements. Now each card would have a company name in the H4 tag, a description inside a span tag, the CEO's name inside of the paragraph, and then the icon inside a div with the class of icon. Now, these icons are pulled from Remix icon. So if you wanna have, or if you wanna know the specific icons, you can head over to their official site, Remix icons. Now this is the basic or the broiler structure of the entire code. Now we can just paste in the rest of the cards and we're done with our HTML. Now that we have our HTML structure in place, Let's move on to the CSS where we'll create the animations that trigger on scroll. First, we'll start by importing the Poppins font from Google Fonts. Now, if you don't know how to add Poppins or any Google Fonts, so you're gonna come here in the browser and you're gonna search for the desired font, in this case, which is Poppins. And then right next to it, you're gonna search for Google Fonts. You're gonna open the first link. And here, you're gonna click onto in this case, if this is your first time, it would show as get font. You're gonna click here. You're gonna get this embedded code. You can either link it or you can import it. You're gonna copy this and you're gonna paste it in your CSS file. Once that is done, now we're gonna style our body to take the full viewport height and width. And we're gonna set the margin and padding to zero. And also we would apply the desired or the imported font. In this case, it is Poppins. We also set a background color to make our cards pop. The H1 tag is aligned centered and given a large margin to position it nicely in the viewport. The container is then styled as a flex box with column layout aligning the items at the center. And also a padding block of 100 pixels so that the first and the last card have proper gapping from top and bottom. And also, there is set a gap of 100 pixels so that there is a decent amount of space between the cards. With the CSS that we have written so far, our website looks something like this. Each card is styled with a fixed width and height and a white background and also given rounded corners. We add a box shadow to give it some depth and also set it up as a flex box to center its content. Now the transition property ensures a smooth transition or smooth animation effect 
when the card is hovered over since we're going to be adding the hovered animation later down the line. Notice that we have set the position of the card to relative. This is crucial for positioning the icon absolutely within the card. We style the text elements within the cards, setting appropriate font sizes, margins, and alignments. The span element has a slightly smaller font size, italic style, and reduced opacity for a more subtle look. The icon is then absolutely positioned in the bottom right corner of the card. Because the parent card has a relative position, the card or the icon inside of the card is positioned absolutely within the card, not the whole page. We then add a hover effect to scale the card slightly when the user hovers over it, adding a bit of interactivity. Now let's define the keyframe animations for the cards. We create two animations, one for the elements to slide in from the left and one so that they slide in from the right. Both animations start with the element being completely transparent and off screen and end with the element fully visible and in its final position that is translate x as zero. Finally, we apply these animations to the cards. Odd number cards will slide in from the right while even numbered cards will slide in from the left. We also add some margins to the side to create more of a gap between the even and odd numbered so that they're not aligned straight at the center. The animation duration is set to one seconds with an ease timing function for smoothness and the forwards keyword ensures that the animation stays in its final state after completing. Now let's dive into the most important properties that will help us create the on-school animation and that is animation timeline and animation range. The animation timeline with the view function as its value is a property that allows the animation to be triggered when the element enters the viewport. This means that the animation starts when the user scrolls to the element making our animation trigger precisely when we want them to. And then we have our animation range. Here we have set the entry as 0% and cover as 30%. Now this property defines when the animation should start and how long it should last as the user scrolls. Here, entry 0% means the animation starts as soon as the element starts entering the viewport. And cover 30% means the animation continues until 30% of the element is visible in the viewport. This creates a smooth scrolling animation effect. And that's it. With just a few lines of CSS, we have created a visually appealing scroll animation that enhances the user experience. Feel free to play around with the animation properties to create your own unique effects. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more such amazing content. Thanks for watching the video. Meet you in the next. Till then, bye bye.